CBS Sports welcomes you to continuing coverage of the road to the Final Four here in Anaheim, California tonight. The sun will set on the season for either Duke or Kansas in this regional semifinal, a matchup that certainly is marquee enough, you would think, to be even a regional final or a Final Four game, but it's Duke and Kansas for the right to make it to the Elite Eight and face Arizona Saturday night. We welcome you to the pond. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Billy Packer here with Arizona. Convincing winner already here against Notre Dame. Duke, Kansas again. We saw them play in the tournament back in 1990. These, that was uh, three years ago back in 2000. Collison and Heinrich, they certainly remember that game, Billy. They really do. The game was played in Winston-Salem. Roy Williams coming back to the ACC territory. Collison and Heinrich were outstanding, but Duke was able to get their number that day. Nick Collison, incredible inside performer. Had the game this year, I think the individual game of the year, the 24 points, 23 rebounds against Texas. Has great footwork, tremendous leader, can rebound, and he's got to stay in this ball game and stay out of foul trouble. Well, those two seniors going against a Duke team that has had some star performances all season long, but particularly lately here by a freshman, J.J. Redick. An incredible shooter, and he came onto the scene known for his outstanding ability to shoot outside, but I don't think anybody figured that he would do it so quickly as a freshman leader for Duke. Dante Jones, all ACC, first team. One of the things that I really admire about Dante's game this year is that he expanded his game to now become an outstanding perimeter shooter as well as a guy that can slash and go to the basket. Here we'll see one of those jumpers. He's really been the leader since transferring from Rutgers, a fifth-year senior. What should we look for here tonight, Billy? Well, one of the things Kansas likes to do is not only push the ball up the floor, but they're very good on defense, going from defense to offense. Here you see the perfect spacing on the floor. They get all the defenders over on one side of the floor. Nick Collison sees a streaking Kirk Heinrich, gets him the ball in the cross-court pass. Perfectly executed fast break for Kansas. All right, we spoke to the two coaching icons, Coach Krzyzewski, Coach Williams, about this matchup. We've got to keep our starting five in the game. We cannot afford to have Nick, Kirk, Keith, those guys sitting over there on the sidelines with me. We've got to keep them out of foul trouble, rebound in the basketball, and hope uh, that Duke doesn't make, you know, 50% of their three-point shots because they're going to shoot them. You have to stop them from running as much as possible. They're, uh, they really advance the ball better than anybody in the country. I, I would say better than a lot of pro teams. Uh, and so they score on break and secondary break, and they break off of everything. Here are the lineups. Jones, Williams, Ewing, the ACC Tournament MVP, Reddick and Duhon, Graves, Collison, Blankford, Heinrich, and Miles. Jim, one of the things to look out for early in this game, one of these two teams is going to have a matchup problem. Will it be Jones having to play against Braves? Or is it Jones going to play Collison early in this ball game? No match there. Braves down the lane. I don't think Duke can get by with Jones playing Collison. That's asking an awful lot to play against a big low post player that knows how to handle a guy who's got him on his back. Ewing, three-point basket. MVP of the ACC tournament. Picks up, but he's had a great stretch run here. Now it's Williams back, and it is going to be Jones on Graves. Much better. And it's going the other way. It's going against going Graves. Graves. Yep. He set a moving screen on that play, and boy, Roy Williams, without Simeon, Jim, he is in a situation where he cannot afford to have any of his players pick up cheap fouls in that starting lineup. It's been a big issue all season long. Simeon out with a shoulder injury, surgery tomorrow, lack of depth for Kansas. Great hustle by Graves. He's actually beaten on the play. Young man who really worked to get himself in shape. Steps up, gives it up. There, Jones is back on Collison. Langford, Graves over the top, and Jones for Duke. Now, let's see if Duke will push the ball up the floor against Kansas, something Kansas loves to do. If you're Mike Krzyzewski with a deeper bench, you want to try to wear Kansas down. Heinrich, a good job coming out on Reddick. There's Jones, one to work on Collison. Jumper over him. Right back to Nick Collison, first team All-America, Big 12 Player of the Year. If that's going to be the matchup for Kansas, Jones should look to go ahead and put the ball on the floor. Graves couldn't hold it. Up to you, and he'll challenge Collison. And it is sent away. Bonnie Bernstein. 
Well, Jim, Mike Krzyzewski referred to KU's break as shockingly quick, and not just off of missed shots or turnovers, but even inbounding the ball. And he said it was impossible to duplicate that in practice this week. So he just put a point of emphasis on it with the hopes of slowing down KU's game, getting them into a half-court game while being able to maintain their own tempo when they have the ball. Jim, two screens called for fouls. That time, Williams extending his hip and getting called for the cheap foul. Just as we saw Graves a uh, second or so ago. Jones Collison. What is Collison doing outside? He needs to get inside. There's Langford coming inside. Got Duhan to leave his feet, and he connects. Well, who will ever forget the great start that Langford had in the Arizona game? 21st half points lit everything up. That game seemed like it was over. And all of a sudden, Lawrence, Kansas, had it go the other way. Radic over the top of the backboard. That was back in January 26th at Allen Fieldhouse. And 44-24 in the first half, Kansas, a 37-point turnaround as our Arizona would win it by 17. Duhon on Heinrich. Langford has that swatted away by Williams. Nice soft touch by Williams, not to bat it out of ball, out of bounds, keep it alive for his teammate. Inside, Williams on the blocks, and he too sees it slip out of his hands. Well, we saw Graves with an easy dunk opportunity that slipped out, and now Williams does likewise. Miles drive. Charge. Right into Sheldon Williams. There's a case where Miles has got to realize when he's open like that to put it up. Now here we see right away Duke going to Casey Sanders. Now he played in that game against Kansas back in Winston-Salem. Did not 2000. score a rebound. Yep. But uh, an experienced player, good shot blocker. Horvath was there that day too. Horvath with the back spasms for Duke and he may not be able to play here tonight. We we'll see the game is being called relatively close. If you're Roy Williams and here's what Roy recognizes as well. He's going to go to his bench because if the game's going to be called close he's got to utilize that bench early. We saw Horvath for a second there. That's the second foul on Graves. Just what they were hoping to avoid. Duke is very good at running their out of bounds plays for scores particularly against teams that play man to man the basket for Dante Jones. Nash has got the respect now that Jones looks for that outside shot. Oh. Miles. Oh. Oh. Back. back on Nash just into the game. Bryant Nash. So far, Duke doing a good job preventing Kansas from pushing the ball up the floor. Heinrich doing a good job for Kansas, not giving Reddick any good open looks. Heinrich probably comes around screens as well as anybody in the country defensively. Example. Reddick steps in. Sanders. Thanks to Reddick. You can see right away Duke is going to challenge Kansas and try to get them in foul trouble. Just what Roy Williams said at the top of the show he does not want his team to do. And a block foul called on Dante Jones. Nice passing by Reddick inside. Casey Sanders, who has suspect hands, really concentrated on that one, Jim. And again, you start talking about senior experience. He never makes that catch two years ago. Duke playing a little zone here on the out-of-bounds situation. 2-3, Sanders down inside. Thomason in the middle open. Too strong with the shot. Langford. Looked like basket interference. Yeah, I think that ball was in the cylinder. Mike Krzyzewski did as well. No call. Straight man-to-man -man by Kansas in this game. Dangerous pass. Heinrich almost got there. Reddick working on him. Heinrich has great feet. Very quick on defense. And he's doing a lot of talking to Reddick right now. Senior against freshman. Trying to wear him down mentally. Duhon comes inside. Tipped around by Collison. Up ahead, Langford. Nice recovery there. I thought he'd have to have steps. 
Miles free. Had an open shot, try to go inside. Jim, that's not one of the failings for Miles. He has those open shots and won't take them. Kansas hitting only three of its first ten shots. 8-6 Duke. The first break. Billy, the biggest development here at the start is that Graves is on the bench with two fouls. Jim, it, so far this year, he's fouled out of five games. In ten others, he had four fouls. Now, we're talking about losing a guy who has nine games in which he's had double-figure rebounds. So a big loss for Kansas early in this ballgame. Duke stays in the zone on the out-of-bounds situation. 2-3. Collison, nothing there. And Sanders read it all the way up ahead. Ewing for two. Beautiful hit-ahead pass. Sanders, a guy who filled in when Boozer was hurt for Duke on their quest for the national championship and did so perfectly. Started the title game in 2001. Casey Sanders. And he's on policy. And here's where Mike Krzyzewski has the ability. Even if Sanders gets in foul trouble, it won't hurt Duke. Langford will head to the line as Duke clobbered him on the way in. Called on Sanders. He's first. Probably Ewing would have been smart to allow Sanders to block that shot. Sanders a terrific shot blocker. It's way up in the air. It's amazing. He had 26 triple doubles as a high school senior. We well, had 19 <laughs> blocks one time in a game. <laughs> a lot was expected of him when he came to Duke. Probably hasn't been everything that uh, was expected of him, but uh, he's shown good leadership this year. And when he gets the opportunity to play, he produces. I remember when we were down in St. Petersburg for that thrilling Kentucky Duke regional final where Kentucky mounted that 17 point comeback in the second half. Casey a Tampa kid was there having already committed. That was his senior year in high school. Having committed to Duke first time we saw him. Again later a starter in the championship game did not start tonight late in the season they put Ewing in the lineup and Sanders off the bench. Good defense by Nash on Jones. Jones underestimated Nash ability to go up in the air. That's Michael Lee running through there number 25 for Kansas seeing his first action. Langford open three. That shot. Tipped up and in. Nash again showing he can go in the air. And right now, what we have seen, because of the fouls on Graves, Roy Williams is forced to play small, and basically he is now matching up Duke. Redick off the screen. Ties the pass to Sanders. Again, his hand's always been yep, suspect. suspect. And it's Heinrich driving. And a charge. Ooh, that's the second time they've gotten a charge at that end. And you can tell well scouted is Duke because Kansas loves to finish, particularly Heinrich. So don't go for the block. Get in position to draw the charge. Heinrich will take it to the basket. He may have hurt his wrist a little bit out there, Jim. Yeah, he's uh, trying to disguise it a little bit. That's the first foul. First team all-conference player. Had a tremendous career in Kansas. John Dockery, a freshman for Duke. This is a very deep, deep Duke lineup. They've had 10 different starting lineups this year. And they are so young, a lot of those times early in the year, Mike Krzyzewski just trying to figure out what could be a combination. Inside, Sheldon Williams. There's a freshman from Oklahoma starting to pick up his game as the year goes on. Much better matchup for Duke right now. Two big guys in the game. Nash lost control of it, making the spin move. Duhan, good heads up dribble. Heiner tried to get the charge at the other end. What did you think this game would be tonight? In the 70s, the 80s? What do you oh, think? I, I thought it was going to be in the high 80s. There's Williams again using that brute strength of his. Not really good footwork, but he's got a lot of strength. Off Kansas, Reddick returns. So does Dante Jones. Sanders out. And Daniel Ewing with Wait. a breather. Jim Williams did not get a lot of playing time in mid-year. All of a sudden has come on the scene. He now has six double-doubles. His biggest scoring game, 20 against Virginia. almost averaged a double-double the last month. That block by Collison is second of the night. Coming over from the weak side, knowing how Jones can elevate, that was quite a block. 
Lee kicks oh. out. Langford spins off the rim. Look at Reddick with the one arm. Right now, Duke a lot fresher. Dockery, freshman from Chicago with a three. And if you're Kansas, I think you need to slow this game down a little bit and get Collis in the ball in the low post. And let him operate. Now well, they're going to call it on Williams. His second. Up in the the freshman body. foul. Kansas, Kansas down 15-9. Meanwhile, Kentucky pushed to the end by Wisconsin. Six-point Wildcat victory. Bogans with an ankle sprain. Well, I certainly hope there's a senior that has really devoted his entire senior year to make that a great team. We certainly hope that he gets uh, able to play. Heinrich off that time, chased down by Jones. So far, Kansas is completely out of sync in regard to their half-court offense. Look out here. Boy, Reddick doesn't usually miss that open shot. Very seldom misses the rim on that shot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you give him that kind of look. Usually all nylon. Good try. Well, pick me up. He's not afraid to go long distance. No, his, his range is about 30 feet. Williams and Raves with two now. Oh, there's no one there. He had a double team. Smart play that time by Collison. Collison cutting in. Nice. Gives it up. Graves back in the game with the dunk. When Collison is down in the low post, Duke is going to have a hard time handling him, and he really needs to stay down in there. A big move by Roy Williams, seeing his team down, having to go back with Graves, even though he's got two fouls on him. Roy did not want to see this game get away from his team early. Drives on Miles, Spence gives it up, Williams, Collison again, he's got three blocks. And again, Williams without the good footwork, unable to put that shot away. Well, they'd love to try to get Williams in there and get that third foul on Graves. It'll switch off one on the shot clock, but it's a takeaway in time. Continuous play, Heinrich, short on that one. Good tap out. Bounce pass inside Collison. Puts it away. He is money in the bank, Jim, when he's down in the low post. He's got great footwork, excellent hands, knows how to position himself inside better than any other low post player in college basketball. Four points, four rebounds, three blocks for Collison. Jones working on him now. And last touch by Kansas. Both teams here shooting below 40%. We have a timeout on the floor. Beautiful assist, Collison to Graves. War headlines of the hour. Another night of tremendous explosions rocking part of Baghdad. In the Ramallah oil field in southern Iraq, firefighters are making steady progress against well fires ignited by retreating Iraqi troops. U.S. Marines say many other wells were booby-trapped. In northern Iraq, American paratroopers jumped in overnight and are now working. They've opened a whole new front. Alan Pizzi is there. The 1,000 men night drop onto an airfield in Kurdish-controlled northern Iraq marked a new dimension in the war. A special forces officer said it went remarkably well. It's very muddy out there. Uh, there was very, very few uh, injuries sustained. The soldiers set up defensive positions and began preparing to fight Saddam Hussein's forces in different ways. The whole gamut, ranging from uh, unconventional warfare to uh, direct action. When their heavy armor arrives, the 173rd would be prepared to go up against the Rocky forces. And over the coming days, more forces will flow in to open up the much-delayed northern front. Alan Pizzi, stay with CBS. When news breaks out, we'll break in. I'm Dan Rather. And those just rejoining us, a big development here in Jeff Graves. He's been whistled for his third foul, the 9.59 mark of the first half. Bryant Nash comes back on the floor. Sanders hits one of two for a three-point Duke lead. Which is about his average, 45% from the foul line. And let's see what Duke is going to do. They're mixed up on their defensive assignments right now. Lee whips it around. Nash gets the feet set. 
And Duke with the rebound. How big a development is that? Oh, it really is because it really takes away what Roy Williams can do with Graves certainly not available for any more of this first half. It means Collison probably going to have to stay on the floor for 40 minutes tonight. Lee and Heinrich doing a good job getting out on Reddick. There's Duhon with a three. Bangs at home, six point lead. That's really a key for Duhon to get confidence. Remember the Southern Cal game oh. in Philadelphia. Boy, Sanders way up on the board. Two men down for Duke. Ewing outside Reddick, top of the key. And, three more. and Roy Williams is going to have to come back in with Heinrich. Collison understanding he wants that ball down and low. Sanders is on him. Kansas down nine. One of its starters on the bench with three fouls. Almost stolen away again. Lee off on the jumper. Collison working inside, and he is fouled by Ewing. It was worth a foul there, though, Jim, because Collison had an easy two. Now nine-point lead for Duke. As Graves sits with three fouls, and all five Duke starters have scored. And hit five out of seven from three. Jim, we don't see great shooting in both of these teams coming off. As a matter of fact, Kansas coming off a 40 for 59 game, 67.8%, which is a new Kansas record in the NCAA tournament in a win over Arizona State. And Duke coming off a game where they shot 61% against Central Michigan. Heinrich back in. Roy Williams just trying to steal some minutes here with Lee. Kansas was really threatened in its opening round game. Utah State had a three to tie to send it to overtime at the end. Bounced off the rim, but then Arizona State and the full muscle of the Jayhawks came out on that one. Now look at this, a little picking up almost half court. Collison on Sanders. Sanders with a good solid screen for Duhan. Reddick steps back for the three. And Langford. He had to fade away on that shot. Good recovery by Heinrich. Langford will drive in. They're going to count the basket. Foul on Casey Sanders, and they count it. This is a good drive by Langford. Everybody playing him to go left. Now, there's where a scouting report. You know, I don't really think that should be on Sanders. That should have been on Jones, is it? He reached in it on it. It is on Jones. Yeah. But one of the things, you know, you scout, you say this man is all left hand. Lankford changes up and goes right with the dribble, giving him the left-hand layup. Nice move. The second on Jones. Lankford this year, we talked about that Arizona game. He was 11 for 19 at 27. That was his high for the year. He had 20 against Texas Tech in a win. So a little five-point flurry here by Kansas after being down nine a moment ago. Duke goes 1-4. Reddick tries to flare out, but Heinrich recognizes the play. Notice when Reddick catches the ball, he gets his feet squared up to get ready for that jump shot. He squares him up quickly, too. Five seconds on the shot clock. Doesn't matter. they got plenty of time away. Jones had a good look. Excellent positioning by Collison on the rebound. Miles pull-up jumper. And it's Duhon for Duke. Duke would rather get in the run game. Collison's being asked to go up and down the floor. Sanders gets it out to Jones. Jones should have taken the first shot, don't you think? Yeah, Sanders inside could have taken yep. one, too. Collison open. Back to the rim. Doesn't miss that very often. You see, Sanders is very tired right now. Mike Krzyzewski's not like giving him any look. Sanders not used to playing this many consecutive minutes. The assistant coaches over there are probably Johnny Dawkins telling Mike Krzyzewski right now we need to make a, a break there and get Sanders out. Bad shot. Ewing. Under seven minutes to play and far lower scoring than you ever thought, Billy. Oh, yes. I expected this game to be played up in the 80s. Heinrich trying to go back door. Red all the way. Jones. Perfect pass. Ewing. Better than perfect, huh? Oh. Right, th that was the only place that ball could be thrown. Nice catch by Ewing, understanding he's got to catch it before he makes the play. And again, Kansas not giving Collison the ball in the low post enough. 
Allison with the oh. left hand. Very nice. But Sanders is so tired, he, he's, he can't breathe. But Mike Krzyzewski, he's got Williams on the sideline. Would love to see some kind of stop here to give Sanders a break. Looking for a whistle. Yeah, and Sanders is so tired he can hardly stand up. And Sean Dockery has gone over to the scorer's table to check in also. Wow, I thought Duhon was going to throw one up from 30 feet. <laughs> yeah, well, more than that. Timeout called by Duhon. Smart play. Rather than throw it away, Miles was doing a good job on defense. Look at Collison right here. First team All-American lays it in. Four point Duke lead. The Saturn Light Ship providing the aerial views of the Anaheim area over the pond tonight. Saturn Light Ship team hopes you're enjoying the look from high above here as we continue with our Sweet 16 coverage. You know, what's really surprising, Billy, is how few times Duke and Kansas, with their great traditions, have met. They never even met until 1985. Well, there's a guy that met them one time back in 86, Johnny Dawkins, who led Duke to the Final Four that year before losing to Louisville. Had 24 against Kansas, knocking Danny Manning's team out of that one. But Kansas came back in 88, Danny Manning leading them over Duke. That's the only time Kansas has beaten Duke. There's Ewing with a three. Well, they really have some weapons on the outside now that Ewing's been moved into that starting lineup. The Blue Devils with a 6-1 advantage all time over Kansas. And again, that one Kansas win was in the 88 Final Four. They got Sanders back well, on the floor. They gave him the timeout. They went over there and put him on the respirator. And he's <laughs> back out there now playing some solid defense. And knocked it out of bounds. And an uh -oh. official timeout. You saw Mike Krzyzewski say, good job. We'll be right back to Anaheim. Greg Gumbel in New York. We'll get you back to the pond in Anaheim for more of Duke and Kansas. But Marquette and Pittsburgh are in the final minute in Minneapolis. Let's take you there live. Vern Lundquist, Bill Rafter. Night for three off the mark. The tip no good. And Troutman cannot control it. So a chance for Marquette to take the halftime lead. They'll play for one. The shot clock is off. Diener and Wade have been held in check. But the big guys for Marquette have helped give them a tie game at this point. No timeout now. Tom Green wants to talk things over. Time called. Get you back to the pond in Anaheim. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Try to force it in. Numbers. Here comes Kansas on the break, and Lee lays it in. Fast break basket by the Jayhawks. 27-24 Duke, which has led most of the way. Largest lead here of nine. Duhon wanting to challenge Miles. Kyle oh. the glass. Wow. And here you see Kansas trying to push that ball up the floor. And Lee, open jumper. Nice. He can 10 points in the second round win against Arizona State. That was about the most effective semi break that Kansas ran so far in this ball game. The under four timeout. 29-26 Blue Devils. Here is the singular wireless fan poll through the first two rounds of the tournament. Which game had the most dramatic finish? Billy? Wow. Here you've got two right here. Wait a minute. The, the, NC State, is that what you're trying no, to tell us? No, I'm talking about, oh, excuse me. I wanted to go okay. middle. <laughs> okay, there you go. I, I, I can't read right, but that, I'll tell you what, Gonzaga, Arizona, UNC, Wilmington, Maryland. Dramatic finish, oh. though, the Nicholas shot. Oh, pretty classic. Singular wireless users send vote to 171 or log on to cbsportsline.com slash singular. Results coming up on singular at the half. Nice adjustment defensively by Kansas on that out-of-bounds situation. Dante Jones. Boy, when you elevate with your legs like that, it really sets up the shot. Terrific mid-range jumper. There's Collison in a position that doesn't help his team out there. I realize that's their offense, but this is where he's effective. He'll shift inside, find Langford cutting through. Another assist for Collison. He is so effective when he gets anywhere near that paint. And the pace of this game basically helping Kansas a little bit too, though, Jim, because they are not having to run up and down the floor. Miles running up the floor right now. Cut off by Duhon. Collison in position. Sanders on his back. Tipped up and in by Langford. He got the position on Ewing. He sure did. Inside position. Nice comeback by Kansas. Brought it down to one. It was nine. Roy Williams on that sideline. Urging his team. He's like a jockey over there. 
No, that's not a good play. You got to consider who's trying to be the catcher. Sanders isn't going to make that play. Duhan forced it inside, but here he reaches in for the steal. So Duhan tones for the mistake. It's Ewing, and it's a charge. Every time these referees have been consistent on that play. Got to pull up and take the little jumper. Coming up, singular at the half with Greg Clark and Quinn Snyder, Missouri coach, who's with us in the studio. We'll get you updated on all the latest tournament news and a live look at Marquette Pittsburgh coming up on singular at the half. That's the 10th Duke turnover. Well, a team that turns the ball over more than they have assists, Jim, on the year. A sign of their immaturity as a basketball team, so not surprising. It was a solid back screen by Heinrich to get Collison in the low post again. Collison for the lead, and Kansas has fought its way, fought it all the way back. Terrific move, getting Collison down in the low post, and again, by keeping this into a half-court game, which is not normally Kansas's game, it is really helping them stay fresh. It's a 19-9 spell here for the Jayhawks. Jones with a three, right back. Just had a lead change here. Collison gave Kansas the lead from nine down to move in front. But at the other end, the three-point basket by Jones as Duke ahead. Final minute of the first half in Anaheim. Time for Kansas to be patient to get that ball down inside of Collison again. Heinrich, who hasn't scored, gives it up. Collison blocked by Sanders. Miles left over. Rattles it home. Again, the great hands by Collison to retrieve the block shot. This is a terrific accomplishment by Kansas to be staying this game with Graves out of that lineup for most of the first half of the three fouls. Ewing, and again, Collison climbs and rejects, but a foul call here on Lee. Daniel Ewing, an excellent free throw shooter, 83%. Let's take a look at the Pontiac high performance of the day. Estill of Kentucky. Well, he had to have it, too, with Bogans out. Hopefully, as we said before, that ankle sprain is not that severe. For more great performances as they happen, go to NCAAsports.com. Oh, two shots. Ewing, who had the incredible 11 for 16, 5 of 7 threes, 32 points in the win over Virginia to start things going towards his MVP award in the ACC tournament this year. How about Jim Duke University? University in the ACC tournament has won the last five. It's amazing. First time ever. You're no talking one's about ever accomplished that. 15 and 0 the last five years in a tournament that's that competitive in a one and done situation. Surprising miss by Ewing. Lee Melchione has come in for the Blue Devils here in the final 20 seconds. Timeout called by Roy Williams in Kansas. All tied 35. Jayhawks will come back for the last shot of the half. All square 35 here. And Collison's had the big half for the Jayhawks, but meanwhile, Heinrich has not scored, Billy. But I think he's going to have the ball in his hands this last 19 seconds. Look for him to make a play with Collison on the inside. Saw Reddick there for a moment, one of six from the field. Heinrich should come out of this double screen down in low looking for the shot. He's in the left corner with eight seconds. Miles out high, Melchione on him. Collison, Casey Sanders says, no, thank you. Wow, that clock kept moving right there. I'm kind of surprised. A few tenths of a second. Roy Williams asking about it as well. I think Roy's right. Three seconds in the half. Heinrich to inbound, needs some help. Collison, Dockery almost fouled him. Heinrich beats the buzzer. Heinrich still comes up short for the entire first half, did not he? Scoreless. But Duke and Kansas, everyone felt so evenly matched. I thought the score might be at halftime 48-48, not 35-35. Bonnie? All right, Roy Williams, your team was down by nine points early in this half. How'd you chip away at the lead? Well, we had to go to the small lineup because Jeff Graves got his third foul, so we can't take advantage of our size if we don't have him in there. But that did make us a little quicker on the defensive end, too. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you, Bonnie. So at halftime, the score, 
Duke 35, Kansas 35. Greg and company coming up from New York in just a moment. You have the Saturn light ship, the entire team on the Saturn light ship. Hoping you're enjoying tonight's game on the road to the Final Four. All right, Billy, the Microsoft Agile move of the half. Well, when Graves was in the ball game with Collison, it was a big advantage for Kansas because they could go big. And there is the excellent pass. Graves puts it down. Collison had a monster first half. Five for 10, eight rebounds, 12 points, four assists, three blocks. Other than that, he uh, basically didn't do much at all. Terrific first half. Yeah, hands and uh, everything. And there's Duke just barely out shooting Kansas. Duhon somehow got this one to go. Beautiful soft touch way up on the rim above the window but look at Duke from three you know we heard from Roy Williams at the start that he couldn't afford his team to get in foul trouble or Duke to shoot 50 percent from three and Duke got both of those things going their way in the first half with Graves in foul trouble and there you see even without Graves in the game and Wayne Simeon not available Kansas still controlling things Bonnie wanted to make sure my mic was on Mike Krzyzewski had said that Duke had played defense in this tournament about as good as they played all year, but the one thing Johnny Dawkins pointed out was they weren't crashing the boards well enough. He said Keith Langford and Nick Collison had six offensive rebounds together, and they capitalized that. Also about Collison said they he drove on us a couple times, and we want to stay in front of him and make sure he can't do that in the second half. All right, thank you, Bonnie. The bench production in that first half was even as well, Billy, which is a little bit of a surprise. Shocking in the fact that Duke averages 22 points off the bench. Kansas only 11, and there's Williams trying to go right inside. Now Graves has got to really think out there in this second half. Hollison goes inside to Graves, and the quick hands of Ewing. That was a good pass. Graves should have blocked out. Reddick for a quick five-point lead. Two open looks for Reddick today that he very seldom will miss. Heinrich got fouled on the arm to the corner perhaps on the board nope still hasn't scored Heinrich has to keep putting the shots up all there for Langford Jim when you're a senior you're having a game like this you've got to fight through it keep putting up shots now he's holding his wrist remember in the first half when he really banged it he's holding it right now like it's uh, really in some pain Jones three-point shot it's a tough matchup for Collison to have to go out on Jones. Duke has made eight threes on the game. Kansas only one. Block foul called on the Blue Devils. And Dante Jones is down, back on his feet. Down just for a second. Jones, as we said, fifth year senior. Transferred from Rutgers. Basically uh, out of his friendship with uh, Jason Williams. Sat out one year at Duke and has played extremely well since. Nice inbounds pass. Ewing got a hand in there, but Reddick from behind. So often, Jim, in this tournament, we have seen teams get whipped on out-of-bounds plays that go immediately to an easy two points. So many times, the players are not seeing both the inbounder and the man they're guarding. And that's one thing you practice and try to prevent more than anything. Oh, how many times do we see in practice coaches going over the opponent's out-of-bounds plays? And it's, uh, you know, you're giving up such an easy two when you're not there. Long rebound. It's Reddick for Duke. It's Graves and Williams. And Graves has got to stop, stay out of foul trouble anymore. He's got three, and they're going right to Williams. Williams trying to challenge, picks up his dribble. Maybe they'll come back in. Jones driving policy. And gets. That's a tough matchup. Collison just not quick enough to stay with Jones, and Jones realizing put that ball on the floor. Pass was wide for Graves. Graves never moved for it, and I think Roy Williams is going to say Graves is not our man anyway. He's played better with a smaller lineup. That's what he said in the interview with Bonnie. And Ewing with the soft roll. It's an important possession for Kansas right here. Heinrich. Another long rebound, what Mike Krzyzewski was talking about, not getting the defensive boards. A 9-1 start to the half for the Blue Devils. Collison underneath Jones fell to the floor. Easy put back for Collison. I think that Collison basically one-armed him there. Yeah. Dante's a pretty strong fella. Shows you what Collison can do. 
Allison, of course, played last year in the World Championships, the only collegiate player on that team. Off Duke. Nash coming back in for Kansas. Sanders for Duke. Daniel Ewing. On a tear, has played extremely well in this small lineup that Duke has, playing with three guards. Now the matchup, Sanders, who had a very good defensive first half. Ewing with 13 on the night. Langford stepped to the hole and he'll go to the line. Langford now starting to pick up the offense, noting that Heinrich has not been able to get anything going and realize a lot of pressure on him here. He beats Reddick, no question about the foul and a very good finish. Two fouls on J.J. Reddick. Langford out of Fort Worth, Texas to the line. Honorable mention all Big 12 this year and as great as that league was with not only outstanding teams but good players. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment. Reddick understands what's going on, comes back to help out. Collison can afford to help out because Sanders is primarily in there offensively to be a screener and to get some offensive rebounds. Jones over Nash, he wanted to challenge him. Collison underneath controlling the boards. Nash has done a nice job on Jones. Miles. And Jones not getting the job done defensively. That was Nash for the second time getting to the offensive boards because Dante Jones didn't hustle. And a lead was eight just a few minutes ago. Kansas had a couple of misses, but offensive rebounds kept the possession alive. That proves to be rather large right now as the Jayhawks are back within one. May sound a little silent right now, but the excitement is perking up here in the second half at the pond. Duke jumped right out of the tie at halftime with a 9-1 start to the half. Kansas with a little stretch of its own here to cut it to one. Here's the jumper by Jones. Loose ball picked up Duhon. Nice push, they say, by Kansas, by Miles. We'll see what happens on this tip-in. Dante Jones is outside just standing there, and look at what happens. Nash goes right on by him. Jones still out about the foul line. Breakdown and concentration. Duke looking for the easy inbound. Wasn't there. Duhon tipped out and around. That looked like a touch line for glass. Nice catch there, partner. Well, I was about to go into layup mode there. And here you can see Nash coming. And look at where Jones is. He didn't block out at all and got beat for an easy two. Kansas picking things up here. Kansas with the lead with Collison. Nice job by Roy Williams going small, getting Graves out of the lineup, making the adjustment to say, okay, Duke, I'll match you up with a small lineup. And it's been effective. Jayhawks have led for a total of two minutes tonight. Sanders. And he was held outside by Miles. You have to know your scouting report if you're Kansas. Sanders is not going to make a play from 15 feet. No sense following him there. Timeout on the court. Well, not only was my partner right on the ball hit Langford, but look at those hands by my partner. And then he tries to show off a little bit with a <laughs> pass inbounds with a beautiful technique. I was so excited. I almost nice. got up and launched a three from midcourt. Here's Duke. Seen a little 9 nothing run here by Kansas. Yeah, Duhon with a good decision, realizing that Sanders was breaking away. Jones, who likes the sky. Nash almost saved it, too. He's giving them some valuable time from the minutes he's taken you know, Graves he, out with the three fouls. He really hasn't gotten that much time, but very productive. As an example, he was 7-for-7 seven seven against Texas Tech. Wow. Reddick with three open looks tonight did not hit them. He's 1-for-8. He and Heinrich... Two fellas you'd expect to put up some points tonight, really having tough ball games. Langford, Sanders got a piece on it, and they're going to say it was a jump ball. When Sanders reached in, Jim Burr, the official, is saying the ball was tied up. I, I, I don't agree with the call. I think that was all in the shot, and that, that ball is going to go back to Kansas. It was barely touched. And the arrow belonging to the Jayhawks, thus they keep it. Duke in the out of bounds. Let's see if Collison gets any action here. Going outside this time. Michael Lee 
Duke stays in the zone. Ooh, Collison was looking for the lob pass from Heinrich. He doesn't get it. Ten on the shot clock. There's Duke still matching up in the 2-3 zone. He got beat on this one time with a shot clock violation. Heinrich oh, that's lost control of it going in, but it's Collison in the right place. Sanders rejects shot clock violation. Well, how did Heinrich keep that ball alive? He is really being bothered by that, that right wrist. There's Collison going up, and Sanders doing an excellent job. Just as we talked about Nash doing a fine job off the bench, so is Casey Sanders. And in the college game, you can block it right off Absolutely. the glass. Absolutely, you can pin it. Hey, Casey Sanders is uh, playing with fierce determination here tonight, senior. Lankford staying down on Ewing. Casey needing some help. Duhon there. Ten on the shot clock. Gets by the Jayhawks. Beautiful job by Duhon. First of all, to rescue Sanders and then put it on the floor. It goes right by Heinrich. And away from the ball. Casey Sanders tied up with Collison. Realizing he had no help in there. And there you see Duhon putting it. Look at Heinrich. Not moving his feet, being out of position right there. Not having the offensive game, but he sure could be playing a little better defense. Duhan beats him with the left-hand dribble. That Duke basket, the first in three and a half minutes for the Devils. Collison, left hand again. Collison showing that he can put that ball on the floor as well as play with his back to the basket in the low post. 19 on the night, and the lead goes back to Kansas. And Duke not getting much going from the three-point line here in the second half, Jim. Kansas doing a much better job stepping out. Dante wanted to go baseline. You can see that coming. Found a man in the corner. On the baseline. Block foul. Call to Langford. Dockery not looking to take that outside jump shot. So you've got to play him to drive. First on Langford. You know, in the heat of the battle, players sometimes forget the scouting reports. There was an example. Dockery will always pump fake and drive. He's not going to take that outside jumper. Marquette and Pittsburgh. How about that performance by Marquette so far? Inside Duhon. And they say last touch by Kansas. Jayhawks saw it the other way. Now, Duhon looked like he, for the second time tonight, Jim was going to pull up and take a 30-foot jump shot. Thought better of it on the pass. That was fortunate. It was touched by Kansas. Body's tangled. Jones takes advantage. Hits the three. His defender was down. Nash was down. Here comes Heinrich. See if he can get something started offensively. Nice hedge move that time on the switch by Jones. Langford in the paint. And a timeout called by Kansas. And that is a rule I'd like to see change, Jim. Guys on the way down are in difficulty. Play it out. I agree with you. Timeout, Jayhawks. We're back here in Anaheim. It's been a thrilling regional semifinal with Duke leading Kansas. And Billy, there's been a story here that all day I haven't been able to let go of a wrenching story involving Joe Holiday, Roy Williams' tenure assistant. Coach Holiday's son, Matthew, is a member of the United States 173rd Airborne Brigade. That's the unit that yesterday parachuted some 1,000 troops into northern Iraq to secure the airfield there. And there is young Matthew with his mother, Roy, R-O-I. We'll pick up that story in just a moment as the Jayhawks have 17 here on the shot clock. Back Down to two. the two-three zone is Duke. And you see Casey Sanders even getting out of the zone to make sure that Collison doesn't touch the ball. He's almost playing a man-to-man. -man. Five on the shot clock. Lee, Collison way out. Back to the rim, pull down Sanders. Nice rebound, a terrific defensive sequence by Casey Sanders, the senior that's really coming in with valuable minutes for this Duke team. Three is off, Lee underneath. Nobody under that time. Oh, and Duhon was there, they yep. called it on Heinrich. That was a very smart play by Duhon. He anticipated what was going to happen, got himself an excellent position. There's Mrs. Holiday, and to finish that story, they have been watching, as so many of us have, just the nonstop coverage. And today, the holidays saw some footage 
of that 173rd Airborne, and they thought they saw their son in some of the videos sent back. They weren't sure if his son, he's in that 173rd Airborne Brigade, they weren't sure if he was one of the thousand, but today they're just certain they saw him in some of the footage that came back. You can imagine, I can't imagine what, uh, what this day is like for them. There's one. this game in perspective, though, doesn't it, Billy? Sure does. There's Heinrich pulling up two. Finally, two for Heinrich, but Reddick is now one for nine. You're talking about a guy that lights it up. Jones inside, and he felt the presence of Collison. Graves back into the ball game now. Roy Williams just trying to give a rest for Nash. Graves thought about going inside. Collison has Jones on his back. Way outside. And he stepped out on the line. That was a bad pass by Lee, putting Collison in, the, in a tough spot. Coach Holiday, you're in our thoughts. Craig Gumbel in New York. Duke and Kansas tied at 49. We'll get you right back after a quick look into Minneapolis, where Marquette and Pittsburgh are six points apart. Vern Lundquist can go after it. Marquette leading by six. It was a tie game at the half. Dwayne Wade, 13 second half points. Here's Travis Diener, held in check for the most part, but not now. I'll tell you, this is one of the toughest guys. Makes big time plays. He's got one of the premier defenders on a page. Fakes as though he's going to use the pick and roll. Beats him baseline, then fades away and converts. Marquette, a first-round loser in this NCAA tournament to Tulsa a year ago. They trail by as many as eight in this ball game in the first half. Here's Page underneath. Let misses. Troutman tries to sink. So we'll get you back there. Meanwhile, it's taking out to Anaheim once again. Duke and Kansas. Jim Nance, Billy Packer. J.J. Redick has just given Duke the lead. It's a tie game at halftime here in Anaheim. Thomason ties at 51. Beautiful job that time by Graves, who's had his problems today because of foul trouble. But a good look inside. Collison always moving. Collison's played almost a perfect game, Jim, in terms of passing, his defensive work, his rebounding, good shot selection. Duke loves to throw that pass underneath the basket cross court. Look at this. Oh, too high. He is looking much more positive, wanting to take his shot. Mid-season, he had problems with that outside shot. He's very unsure of himself. Well, he threatened to take a couple of long ones earlier. Graves. Nice. Yeah, pretty nifty there. Two outstanding plays by Graves, and that brings Casey Sanders up off the bench. You look at the Duke uh, substitutions tonight. And short is Ewing. Collison pulls away. Miles gonna have to wait for the rest of his team. No. Yep, he'll settle down here. Good decision. Collison cutting through. He'll go to the line. Collison blocking shots, pulling down rebounds, assists, or leading score. What a game. Well, we talked about if you're gonna pick a national player of the year, this guy is as good a candidate as anybody. And here you show tonight every phase of the game. He's put the ball on the floor, defended extremely well, great rebounding, some nice shot blocks. All right, Bonnie Bernstein, what do you have? Jim, it's interesting because Coach K can't speak highly enough about Nick Collison. He actually recruited him. They kind of got into a recruiting war, and Collison decided to go in Kansas, uh, to Kansas in large part because it was closer to home, but he considers Collison one of the best players in the country. He says he's so versatile, and with his footwork, he's so great at not just moving up and down, but moving laterally, and he says a lot of big guys can't do that. We're seeing that tonight. He has tied the game with one of two free throws, and Duhon lost it out of bounds. That was another good play by Graves. He's really playing his best basketball of the night, defensively and offensively. We were tied at halftime. We're tied now as we enter the backside of the second half. Nice play by Duhon defensively. Hollison, tough pass. Trying to find Graves. Graves could have stepped into that ball. I think Collison had the right idea. Graves just needs a little more experience. The junior college transfer who had to lose 30 pounds after that automobile accident. 
And there was a time when uh, Kansas didn't think he could get back to this year. And again, Reddick Jones some. almost steal it right out of the hands of Collison. Now Reddick now one for ten. His problem is he's pressing, taking probably a bad shot there, Jim. When you're having a night like he's having, you want that good look. Lob it inside. Langford. Casey Sanders slaps it away up ahead of Ewing. He's got Jones to the left. And Jones almost misjudged that lead. Yeah. That ball hit the rim on the way up. The dunk by Dante Jones gives Duke the lead back. Jones with 18 on the game, 10 in the second half. It's been a tight one throughout here in Anaheim. Good passing. Heinrich open. Having a tough night from the field. Duke looking to push. You gotta wonder when Collison's gonna wear down a little bit. Ewing. Braves with the box out. Collison just running. There he goes, beating his man down the floor. And he ties it at 56. He is showing a lot of courage out here tonight. A lot of guts. 24 for Collison. He has not come out of the game, has he? I think he's gone the whole way, Billy. Yep. Looks like he's bending over now, grabbing those shorts, but a senior who does not want to play his last game here tonight. Ewing, Langford defending. Which That's way are they going to call this? That's going on Langford. Well, that could have just as easily been a hook by Ewing. Langford thought so. Michael Lee checking in for Kansas. We got the under eight break. Just laying it up as easy as that. Game's tied. We'll get you back to Anaheim in just a moment. But first, let's check in to Minneapolis, Marquette, and Pittsburgh in the last five and a half minutes of play. Five and a half remaining. Jerron Brown, who will graduate this spring and thus earn an extra year. You see the emotion of Torrey Morris on the bench. There's Brown with the first free throw. Mark McCarroll can't watch. Well, you, you've seen Pitt a number of times. They've always been in control of a game. And pressing is something that they haven't had to do a whole lot of. At some point, uh, they're going to have to come after this Marquette team. And that's when you're in danger. Pittsburgh looking for a way back. 67-59. We'll keep tabs. Let's get you back to the pond in Anaheim. We have under eight minutes to play here in Anaheim. Duke in the dark uniforms. They have now given this foul to Heinrich of Kansas. And that is his fourth. Heinrich having a very tough night here. Made only one shot. And if you're Roy Williams at 747, a tie score, you've got to get Heinrich out of the game here and hang in there as long as you can want to bring him back with less than five minutes because you sure want his senior leadership on that floor down the stretch drive Heinrich on the Kansas side Reddick on the Duke side both struggling from the field both usually excellent outside shooters one of two Jones gives Duke the lead boy Graves wants that ball inside he's doing a good job in this second half Langford left open Sanders with the play again Duke pushing now. Look for Reddick for the jump shot. Got the feet set. The three. No, he never had the ball in his hands. You can see when you're having that off night, he didn't have the patience to get the ball set in his hands. Collison wide open. Oh, yes. Collison, what a job he's doing, and so is Casey Sanders, a senior, right up there, a perfect block on his part. Sanders, the next time down the floor, commits his third, so Collison has a chance to put Kansas up by two. Sanders with five blocks against Colorado State, had two blocks against Virginia in the ACC tournament, three blocks against North Carolina as well, so really doing the job on the defense. We've had 12 lead changes in this game. 59-57 Kansas. The winner takes on Arizona in the regional final Saturday. And if you're Duke, you have got to figure out a way to get Reddick open for a shot before this game gets down to the two-minute mark. He needs an open look. Maybe a solid screen or two. Jones over Collison. 
And with Reyes on the box. Oh, Jones was trying to draw the charge. Lee baseline, shut off. Miles, old high school teammate, misfiring. It's not his shot. Lee saves it right into the arms of Jones. Two to tie, three for the lead. He got fouled, no call. Yep. Collison really put the bump on him. Langford open, Miles can't find him. Collison open inside, Miles found him. Mike Krzyzewski wants a timeout. That is the largest lead of the night for the Jayhawks. Nick Collison with 29, and the Jayhawks in front, 61 57. Consider that Reddick is one for 10 from behind the arc. The rest of the team, nine of 14. Jim, when you've got a player of Reddick's ability, you have got to set an offensive setup to get him a good shot. He's over there putting powder on his hands as we speak. Let's see if Mike Krzyzewski tries to get a double screen. Lee's on Reddick to get Reddick a shot. Here he comes around the screen. Sanders tries to give him another screen. Great job by Lee beating him out there. Well, he fought right around it. Sure did. Outside Ewing. And Collison, how about the way he's running the floor too? Collison and Graves. Graves open now down on, on the inside. He has really picked up his intensity. Graves. Oh, he hits Sanders on the leg and out of bounds. Hit him ball. right in the hands. Great hustle by Graves. A little miscommunication on the pass by Collison. But the Kansas big men are just beating Duke down the floor. Throws it back in. Kansas. Oh, what a play. Right up with it. Great catch. Left-handed put up. Collison has not been out of this game yet. You'd figure he'd be wearing down some, but not showing any signs of it. He has 19 of Kansas's 28 on the half. He's over 30 now for the game. Oh. Ewing outside. It's a charge. Charge. Collison drew it. It is a one-man wrecking crew. Nick Collison. There is the screen. That is a play that Dean Smith ran a thousand times for Sam Perkins when Roy Williams was an assistant coach. Big man sets the screen on the player inside, throw it right over the top. He just pushed off his own teammate, Graves. Well, Graves' job is to set the screen inside. Dockery in the game, try to pick it up some tempo. So Nick Collison, sensational game. This game matches I think in regard to what's on the line, the incredible game he had against Texas. He's being guarded by Dante Jones now, giving up a lot of sizes, Jones. And that's going the other way. Jones draws it right back. For Collison, just his first foul. Now there's a case where they have to recognize with Jones on him, let Collison get in the low post. Let's see if Duke can slow down this 9-1 run for Kansas. Well, what really helps Roy Williams, too, in this situation is that Heinrich can stay on that bench with this kind of lead. What a defensive job by Lee. He will not give Reddick any kind of looks. Under five minutes to play, and Reddick driving in. Nothing there. Tough shot, and it's Kansas ball. Ooh, Sanders down right on his back. You can get exclusive analysis throughout the tournament from top coaches, including coaches Samson, Katie, Few, and Jarvis as they go inside the brackets behind the scenes at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. What is the call here? They're calling a foul on Graves. That would be it. Or is that his fourth? That'd be four. Yeah. Didn't see the foul on that particular play. Thompson now going to go into the ball game, I think, for Casey Sanders. I thought I'd seen a signal that was going the yeah, other way. I thought it was Kansas ball. Oh, now Duon goes to the line, and it's not his foul shot. Kansas on a 9-1 run to open up a six-point lead. Casey Sanders comes to the free throw line. Forrest free throw shooter that Duke has, 45%. One and one. Having a strong showing here tonight. Michael Thompson will be seeing his first action coming in for the shooter. Sanders with five blocks here tonight. He makes, he'll bring in Thompson. Well, Jim Sanders 
in that great run for the national championship had eight blocks in 84 minutes he played in that NCAA tournament. So good job on his part. You know, and Mike Krzyzewski says you're coming right back in. It was Sanders that said to Mike Dunleavy, you remember before the championship game, Mike, I, I dreamt last night you're going to have the Super Bowl game, of which Dunleavy did. Five threes. To beat Arizona in the final, and Duke can somehow find a way to pull this one out. They'd have a rematch of the 2001 championship game here Saturday night. Langford. Uh-oh. That could have been a pass yep. Should have been. Ball was above the cylinder. Foul called on Michael Thompson. Boy, that looks like Kansas touched it in the cylinder. That'll put Graves on the line. This ball is going to be in the cylinder, no question about it. That ball should have gone over to Duke. You'll see it right here. Any portion of the ball that is in the cylinder when touched by a player on the offensive team is a violation. Graves to the line for Kansas, shooting a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Graves put Kansas in bad shape in the first half, getting into those foul trouble. But he has played a great second half. Boy, Dante Jones with a secure two-handed rebound. Right now, if you're Duke, you got to figure out a way to free up Reddick to get Lee off him. Lee is fighting through every screen. This Duke team has not made a shot in five minutes from the field. Good defense, man to man. Jones steps in. Rolls off, Thompson over the back. Graves goes back to the line. Great block out by Graves and a good job defensively by Collison. Not falling for Jones's jump stop. Let's check now the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Points in the paint, Kansas behind Collison. More than two to one advantage. You can get complete tournament stats at cbssportsline.com or on America Online. Enter the keyword CBS Sports Line. Collison with 31 points and 15 rebounds that's why points in the paint inside advantage heavily to kansas tonight one and one oh two big misses by graves allison down so duke has numbers do they go inside quickly they do go outside here's reddick nope that ball was nowhere near what this young man usually does he is having a nightmare evening Time out on the court. Kansas ball, Kansas lead. We'll be right back. Greg Gumbel in New York. Let's listen in. The final one minute and eight seconds happening right now in Minneapolis. Marquette and Pittsburgh. Vernon Bill. Another look to Wayne Wade. Marquette. Marquette by three. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. Let's get you back to Anaheim. Duke in Kansas. Thank you, Greg. Heinrich on the drive. Gives it up. Collison swatted by Sam. Oh, they say he traveled he, first. He traveled. Heinrich back in the game. Nice move by Roy Williams, keeping him on that bench for an extended period of time. I think, Jim, didn't he go out about the seven or eight minute mark? It was at the seven able, minute mark. Right, able to keep him on that bench for a good five minutes with four fouls. And now Heinrich is on Riddick. A great job by Lee. If anybody's going to get a lot of credit off that bench, it would be Lee on the job he did on Riddick. Not a good shot. Continues to struggle. Down four. You don't want that type of shot. Nobody underneath the rebound. Allison to the corner to Miles. Under two minutes to play. Starting to utilize a little bit of the clock is Kansas. Once again, we'll get you back to Duke and Kansas, but Marquette and Pittsburgh looking at the last 21 seconds of action. Vern Lundquist, Bill Raftery. Pittsburgh, when they resume play, let's get you back to Anaheim, Duke and Kansas. Great help by Langford from the weak side. Ooh, that is a pivotal moment right there. Would have cut it to two. Now, do you think that Duke is losing a little confidence in Reddick on the pass out since he hasn't been making the shots? Because normally that'd be a kick out. Williams not wanting to get a five-second call. And Miles to get moving. Allison way away from the basket. Ten on the shot clock. Under a minute to play. Miles drives past Ewing. Oh, Sanders is going to 
private goaltending. If he had just kept his hands straight up instead of bringing it down. Duke and Kansas under a minute, under 20 seconds in Minneapolis. Let's take you there. And a foul. Fouled hard. You know what? I love this philosophy, by the way. There's plenty of time. You make the two now. We've, we've chronicled Brandon Knight's difficulty on the free throw line up to 57%. At the end of uh, games, he's a lot tougher. You know, he has elevated his percentage, though, and for the NCAA tournament and the Big East, he's 16 of 21. Now, he had a meltdown against Villanova when he missed his last five. This is his first trip to the line tonight. How about that? Yeah, he's, tough. he's just a tough-minded individual. Now, now, they stretch the game out. See, that's what I like. You have plenty of time. If he makes this, you're going to give the foul right away. Try first to give the foul. Let them walk the other way. You've got another opportunity. If he misses and they get it, you've got to know inside there if you're Let or Troutman to give it. Obviously, uh, you prefer Troutman with Let with the four. Brandon Knight now 9 of 13 in the tournament. Make it 10 of 14 for a 56% free throw shooter. The inbounds play. Somebody's got to foul him. It took too long. They had two men on the inbounds passer. And who do they give it to? They get Troutman wants it. No, timeout Marquette, we're told. No, they give a foul. They're giving a okay. foul to Trout. All right, 11 seconds to play. A one-point game there. Back to Anaheim we go. Kansas and Duke. White and their grandson. And that increases the lead to seven with 34 seconds. Timeout called by the Jayhawks. And when you think about this ball game, you have to... So Kansas and Duke are in a timeout. Marquette and Pittsburgh, 11.4 to play. Page is talking some trash to him. and hit the rim and it's all court Townsend and Sanders back on uh, we documented the free throw story earlier and Merritt 8 of 10 at the line Marquette is a team 13 of 18 how about this guy now you're forced for the three Krauser back on. The best way to get the three is inside out or drive, draw everybody, and find. So Page will become very active. You got two speed guys in the backcourt to bring it up, and Krauser and Knight. They're warning Tom Crean to get back in the coach's box, and he does. And Donata Zabatskis, the best three point shooter, remains on the bench. Here's Knight, pulls up, fakes, shoots, off the mark. Well, Knight did what he had to. He got him airborne, thought he might get the three fouls. But a tough-minded group, this Marquette team. You mentioned the spirit all game long, Vernon. You were right on top of it. Here's the pump. He's, in a sense, I think the disconcerting made him pull the string just a little bit. But, ugh, did they come up with some... Magnificent penetrating moves. And now there's still time. This is the big one. 2.3 to go. Off the dribble, they found people. Wade took over. Chance. He's got to heave it. Off the mark. Marquette meets Kentucky. With a spot in the final four at stake. Marquette a winner, 77-74, back in Anaheim, 16.8 to play, Kansas by three. Let's rejoin Jim Nance and Billy Packer. On that half of the court, maybe go long with one. Great rebound by Sanders to keep that alive for Jones. What a play, though, by Dockery. 68-65, Kansas. Nick Collison. With 33 of the Jayhawks, 68. Two shots for Miles. Top free throw shooter on this team on the line at 75%. Nice. Dan Boy. Ewing in for Dockery. For young players that want to watch and copy a free throw style, that was it. Miles stayed right on the line, never backed up, kept his follow through totally complete until that ball went through the net. Two, 
that's all. Tipped around Duhon. Quick two, or do they go for the three? They got Jones slicing they go again. For two. Oh, he misses the layup. Ewing tips it out. Reddick, floater. Thompson is there for Kansas. And last touch by the Jayhawks, but Ball this game. one is over. Roy Williams says no foul. And Reddick, and obviously that was a desperation shot, but adds to his totals tonight that nobody would believe, looking at one of the best pure shooters we've seen him come into college basketball in a long time. And that's it. The Jayhawks have done it. Kansas is moving on to the regional final. They have defeated Duke tonight, 69-65. There's this is holiday. Good for the holiday family. Good for wife Roy, Coach Joe. Again, their son Matthew in the 173rd Airborne Brigade. One of the parachuters who yesterday parachuted into northern Iraq to try to secure that airfield. They saw some video. They saw him in the video today when shots of the paratroopers were shown. Can't even imagine what this day has been like for. Here's Coach Joe for this family. Kansas is in the Elite Eight. The Chevy MVPs. Well, think who they're going to face, Jim. Arizona in one of the classic games this year. You know, Billy, I think back to that game when Collison and Heinrich were freshmen. And Duke beat them that year 69-64. This time... The reversal. Hey, Roy Williams just came over and said, this is the first game we've won with you guys here. I mean, <laughs> come on, you talk about superstitions. It Please, our, Roy. It was our fault. <laughs> we'll see him again on Saturday. Congratulations, Roy. <laughs> Nick Collison with the performance of the tournament. And the Jayhawks in the Blue Devil season. Hey. Greg Gumbo and company coming up in New York in just a moment. Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Enterprise Redicar and by Coca-Cola. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone, as we uh, continue to travel the road to the Final Four. The Marquette Golden Eagles, not since the days of Al McGuire in 1977, have they reached the Elite Eight. They knock off Pittsburgh by a score of 77-74. The Chevy players of the game, Dwayne Wade for Marquette with 22. Brandon Knight, 16 points and a season-high 11 assists for the Pittsburgh Panthers. I don't have to tell you how tough Marquette can be. <laughs> yeah, they were great, and Wade, Wade took over like was in the second half and uh, made, made the plays that he had to make. Brandon Knight did a terrific job, but the 10-point hole late, too, too much to overcome, and Dwayne Wade, a terrific playmaker. He can get his own shot. He helps other people get their shots. He was the difference, and sometimes, Greg, it simply comes down to that. Your marquee player making the difference for you. So after the Big East goes 8-0 through the opening weekend, the Big East loses twice tonight. Pittsburgh falls the number two seed in the Midwest, 77-74, to as Marquette moves on to play Kentucky. In our other game this evening in Anaheim, Kansas knocks off the Blue Devils by a score of 69-65. to My question is, how does Kansas do this without Kirk Heinrich hitting on all cylinders? How about if we start with Nick Collison doing work inside 33 and 18 it seemed like any ball he got his hands on was his Duke never had an answer they had a cold spell from behind the three-point line but Collison was a real man down there inside never seemed to fatigue at all was going the same way at the end of the game as he was at the very beginning Quinn at the very beginning of the night tonight you told us about the intensity of the rivalry between these two teams it didn't disappoint it, it didn't and I thought Michael Lee off the bench for Kansas with big minutes and, and Heinrich in foul trouble. Their perimeter defense was tough. Mm -hmm. So good. the Duke Blue Devils fall to Kansas 69-65 and the Jayhawks move on to play Arizona right now. A look at the tournament bracket from the NCAA and its corporate champion Coca-Cola. 